I'm Guru Mark Halleck. I own North Shore Academy of Martial Arts. Uh, we promote Filipino martial arts, Jeet Kune Do, Thai boxing, Jiu Jitsu. Uh, we try to have a little bit of something for everyone at our school. And then I got, I, originally when I started martial arts, I was started Taekwondo in the early, early 80s. And I got my black belt and we moved to up north here and there really wasn't a Taekwondo school but there was a little Filipino martial arts school that I never he even heard of Filipino martial arts. And I went in there, the guy showed me a little bit, and the rest is history. I've never stopped since. So what style specifically was it? Well, he was telling us it was Dose Paris, because uh, he was under the Canetes, but a lot of times it was Serrata. So, you know, I don't know how much pure like Dose Paris or Serrata was teaching us. You know, it was kind of a mishmash. It, it turned out he was kind of a kook, but he started me on the right path. And from him, I met Pete Hetrick. And he was up in Beloit, uh, Wisconsin. And he was kind of hooked up with uh, Guru Rick Faye's group. And he kind of took me under his wing. So I would travel up to Beloit, train at least once a week. And then I started teaching. My wife got pregnant, so I had to kind of work two jobs. So my part-time job was teaching at another school that never even heard of Filipino martial arts, so I was introducing it. And I would bring Pete down for seminars all the time. So that's how I kind of excelled. And then I opened up my school in 97, and I got a flyer in the mail that said, Diana Lee and Asano and Ron Balicki are coming to a school in Chicago. And I, I've been seeing Guru Dan since 92. So I'm like, oh, Diana and Asano, let's go see her. So we went and it turned out that Ron Balicki taught the whole thing and he was just unbelievable. And from then on, I was his student and 26, seven years later, I'm a full instructor under him. I've hosted him here two times a year for 25 years. Uh, I really give credit to Ron Balicki for kind of making me who I am. You know, the, the great thing about him was he actually taught at the Inasano Academy. So we got to learn that kind of the inside curriculum, not the seminar curriculum. Because there's a difference between s instructors who come out of the academy and instructors who are just seminar. You know, there's a lot more in depth from being in the school. And luckily for us, Ron bestowed that info to us. Again, it's because of him, we go to seminars. There's not a lot of times we're stumped. You know, we might not know it, but we can, we figure it out pretty fast. And, you know, he just, he really worked us hard. And then I've been with Guru in Asano since 92. My dream was to meet him. I finally, Pete Hetrick would host seminars in Beloit. And I went up to the camp there and it was like a 24 hour camp. It was so awesome. And then, uh, Ron got me into Guru's instructor program, and I've been in that now since like 2000, I believe. And I'm up this year for finally my full instructor under Guru Dan. So I'm really, that's like, to me, that's the pinnacle to me. Because I just, you know, to me, Filipino martial arts wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for Guru Dan. I mean, he's really kept it going and he's a legend. That's all I have to say. I can't speak highly enough about him. I was teaching part-time at someone else's gym. And when I got there, he didn't have many students. And after I was there a while, he had a lot of students and he wasn't paying me very much at all, like $100 a week. And my father-in-law happened to stop in one day and saw what was going on. And he said to me, he goes, could you do this by yourself? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, what do you think it would cost? And this was in 97. So I'm like, I don't know, 25,000, maybe 30. And he lent me the money and the rest is history. This, I, 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 I can't believe it's been 25 years I've had this place. I don't want to sound conceited, but I believe it's the way I treat people and everyone feels like family when they come in here. There's no egos. I teach to teach. You know, I have one of the best kid instructors around. 
the parents. I mean, we're, we're into character development hard work, good grades, listening skills. We do job lists for our kids. They have to t bring in a sheet once a month. I made my bed, I cleaned my room, I brushed my teeth. So we work really close with the parents and they just love it. Our kids are respectful, they hold doors open. I just feel like my energy has rubbed off and just made this school what it is because there's really no other, you know, it was me, a one man show. You know, my partner didn't join till like maybe 10 years ago. So it was me working full time as a printer and then opening the school at 3.30 and staying till nine at night, teaching every class because I didn't have anyone. And then finally, I was able to get a couple people, instructors to help me. And uh, it, it's just beyond my wildest dreams because I had a lot of people talk behind my back, tell me I wouldn't last, and here I am today. I was in Taekwondo for seven, eight years, got my black belt, and I moved. And I started Filipino martial arts, and I went back to visit. And he was sitting at his desk, I was sitting here, and I was saying, oh, it's so great to see you, Master Shim. I started learning this Filipino martial arts and I'm gonna add it to my Taekwondo and you know, you'll always be my master. And he stood up, walked around his desk, lifted me up out of the chair, walked me to the door and said, see you later. And I was his loyal student and I've never seen him again. So that's the closed mindedness that I did not want to have. As soon as we did anything else there, you were gone, if it wasn't Taekwondo. And that really set my mind like, wow, you know, how are people supposed to learn all their stuff? There's, you know, not one art has all the answers. Every art has good and bad. And, you know, like Bruce Lee said, take the good, get rid of the bad, and come up with a well-rounded art that suits you, you know? Taekwondo to me, you have to fit Taekwondo. If you can't kick high, Taekwondo is not for you. But in Jeet Kune Do, or even Kali, if you can't do some, if you have something that's hindering you, we figure out different ways for you to be able to do the same thing. You don't need to be able to kick people in the head. If you can kick people in the thigh or the knee, that's perfect, because on the street, you really don't want to kick high. So we try to tailor it to everyone's needs. There's no egos here, there's no bullies here. Everyone helps everyone. You can ask anyone and someone will help you here. And uh, I'm really proud of my, my students for that. Filipino martial arts to me means health and well-being. It's been proven already that double stick, for example, works left and right sides of your brain and it helps with dementia and Alzheimer's. It's been scientifically proven, you can look it up. My mother has Alzheimer's. I am not gonna get it. So for me, Filipino martial arts is about restoring and keeping my health. I'm 60 years old and I consider this the fountain of youth. You can do, the, the Filipino martial arts can be as hard as you want it or as soft as you want it. You can go hard, 100 miles an hour, and then you get someone who's older and you can still practice and go slow and light and they're still getting the same attributes, the same skills, everything. You're just tailoring it to them. We're all gonna be old one day. We're all gonna have a cane. I practice cane in our Kali system because one day we're gonna all have one. I try to keep it realistic, but I try to teach the tradition because the tradition's very important. And I try to tell people, if you don't understand the culture, you're not gonna understand the techniques a lot of time. So you have to kind of understand where these arts came from and how they were developed. And the Filipino martial arts has stood the test of time. I mean, the Filipinos have been invaded by everyone and you've stuck it out and won. And then the 45 came from the Filipinos too because our 38 wasn't stopping them and they were still hacking people's heads before they died. And that's how the 45 was developed. So it's really interesting how the Filipinos have adapted the culture. I, I'm honored to teach this art and I'm not Filipino, you know, and Sometimes I feel uncomfortable, like when I'm around all Filipinos, but 
I can hold my own. I have my, you know, I know it and I want to pay homage to that, you know. The, the friendliness and the humility. Like for example, today I met Ama Rafi. I've never met him before. He was so nice to me and, you know, basically called me part of his family, told me I could stay at his house if I come out there. And I just met the man today. I find that Filipinos are very giving. The students that I have will make us food and stuff like that. I've only run across a couple times, uh, if you want to call it racism, where it was a group of Filipinos and they wouldn't let me train with them. So that's happened to me once or twice. But you know what? I continued on and I surpassed them and I think that's kind of what made them mad. And uh, you know, I set out a goal. And my goal is to spread the Filipino martial arts as, long, as well as Jeet Kune Do. And that's what I feel I'm doing because Lake County would never, you know, that's where we are in Illinois, Lake County. It's never had a Filipino school ever. You know, I'm really happy to bring it to our side of Illinois. Yeah, there's prejudices within our, within our whole community too. So it's, uh, I mean, it's not all like that, but I've, I've seen it too. So. I felt bad. They're like, you can't train with us. You're not Filipino. And I knew them too. It's not like I was a stranger. I knew him from seminars. I was like, wow, okay. This school will be going after I'm gone. That's my goal. I will have my successors to carry it on. As I get older, obviously, I can't do what I did in my 20s and 30s that I can now. My kicking's lower. I need a hip replacement at some point. You know, I've had shoulder surgeries, but I can still go when I need to go. My body feels good. I can swing and you know what I mean? I feel good and I don't feel my age at all. So I'm gonna keep going. Cause again, go back to my idol Gurudan who's 86 and he's still amazing. And to me, longevity, the Filipino martial arts promotes that because it's not a hard style. You're not like Thai boxing, getting kicked in the leg, punched here, elbowed here, this, that, Taekwondo. Again, you can, you can make the Filipino martial arts as smooth and artsy as you want, or as combative as you want. And that's the beauty, you know, like Carenza, for example. It can be Tai Chi, or it can be Thai boxing. The choice is yours. I can Carenza really slow and just work my motions, or I can go really fast and do it and work that. So the choice is yours as to how you want to develop and train and then I will help nurture that and even try to bring more out of you. Jesse and I, you know, Jesse's been at my school now for a little over a year teaching. We've become great friends and we wanted to put together something that's never been done before. I've hosted plenty of seminars through my life, but I've never hosted a seminar like this, where it's strictly just Filipino martial arts, and you have five different experts teaching their system with no egos whatsoever from anyone. And how often is that, that you get five experts, instructors, and there's no ego between them? There has been none. Everyone's been welcoming and friendly, and I've had more compliments from students than really ever, you know? And I feel that they're just, it's a wealth of information, this seminar. It's unbelievable the amount of skill and knowledge people are getting because we all bring a different flavor to the table. So it's like a smorgasbord of Filipino martial arts basically this weekend. So do you plan on having more of these? Yes, sir. We're gonna, at least once a year, you know, Jesse and I were talking, maybe we could even get it on the road. You know, we wanna keep the same lineup because we all mesh so well together. And uh, absolutely, this will be a continued thing. And uh, you're welcome if you're ever in town visiting and you can come by, you're always welcome to come in and do a couple classes on me if you're visiting. Uh, you'll always be welcomed and hospitable and uh, you can rank under me if you want or you can just train. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to share my info.